good evening back to back interviews uh, once again it's results time and i think uh, ever so delighted as usual to welcome a topper we have cml rank 1 in nephrology this time and uh, we've got dr prashnu nigam who comes from kanpur undergraduate of the very famous bj medical college ahmedabad and post graduation currently is doing at pjimf uh, in chandigarh so probably uh, no better places to study he studied in the best of the centers and he's got in to the most coveted course right now one of the most coveted in nephrology at the central institute and that too in his very first attempt so once again huge congrats and uh, welcome to the show thank you thank you sir now my uh, preliminary question which obviously we have to ask everyone this is a basic question like uh, you are now into the final year of your course so the first year obviously would have been very difficult then you could have started off in the second year so Uh, is this rank a byproduct of the work that you have done during the three years, and you have just read whatever you have seen, or is it like you have had a very dedicated, focused preparation towards IMS in nephrology, or is it like you studied very no normally and this has happened? Uh, sir, actually, I think it is a combination of both. Like okay. uh, during my all throughout the specialty postings, all throughout my medicine. Uh, whichever cases we used to see on a day to day basis in any specialty we used to read about that uh, senior residents used to teach us uh, yeah. we used to read from pptes up to date and from uh, marrow other subjects yeah. also i referred to marrow and for uh, nephrology when i started developing interest after the posting i started watching the videos dedicated videos for nephrology and yeah. uh, looking into spe specific topics like glomerular diseases from uh, yeah. p holly Yeah. Uh, and reading the my I've prepared my own marrow notes from the videos and Wonderful. I read them uh, whenever I saw a case I referred to them and again like uh, with that I was used uh, I you I would I was able to replicate the information again and again. So when was your final exam? When was your final uh, MD exam theory and practicals? Uh, sir, in the last uh, week of November we had uh, no. the you had the exam. So right theory and practicals both. Most of the people who ask the same question, right? Like they are held up with the exam so much that they don't even have the time to think about SS or INI or anything for that matter. So you are also like held up with your exams, and everybody has this fear: whatever, how much ever brilliant you are, like will I pass? Will I fail? Like kind of the thoughts will come across your mind too. So how did you kind of uh, manage both at the same time? Uh, so like uh, I had read the nephrology like once before uh, this uh, last semester. Okay. So, sir, uh, in the last semester, I revised nephrology once again. I used to have specific hours for reading nephrology, like in the morning hours, I used to read nephrology, and then in the evening hours, I used to uh, read the other topics uh, or from the other subjects. Like this, uh, I was able to uh, balance a bit. And just uh, one to two weeks before the INSS, I increased the uh, number of hours I used to study for nephrology. Correct. Okay. So, what and just That the nephrology is your way forward. Like, when did you realize that that I am having to prepare nephrology only? Nephrology is my career forward. Like, when did you realize that? Uh, sir, like uh, after uh, in the third semester, sir. By the end of third semester, we almost have completed all our postings except for cardiology, uh, yeah. neurology, and pulmonology. So okay. by that time, when I did one month of nephrology posting in the ward, the OPDs. So at that time, I started developing interest itself. Like almost all the glomerular diseases were admitted in the ward in that period of one month, and like it was always uh, like a challenge uh, in diagnosing in the diseases in nephrology, diagnosing and then like treating. And also the sir, the transplant past we yeah. did not see the immediate post transplant patients, but the long term patients with uh, some TCMR and yeah. with uh, CMV infections and. Like those, so, so the post transplant part is like it is very close to medicine. Also, it it is close to general medicine, managing yeah. all the issues. So that is why I said. Wow, so that's great. Which means, like, uh, even in your second year itself, you had so much of clarity. Many a times, the clarity is what is lacking among students who tend to like uh, think a lot about whether I want neurology, I want cardiology, I want nephrology, like that. So my question is like there are so many parts in nephrology, right? So, but among the so many parts to nephrology, what has been the most interesting one for you? Like among the so many topics of the so many units we have in nephrology, what has attracted you the most and why? Uh, sir, one is the transplant part. Yeah. The post transplant, uh, the all the how to manage the troubleshooting, like post transplant troubleshooting, any complications, those, Correct. and the. 
acute presentations like the rapid pro rapidly progressive renal failure which are maybe glomerular yeah. diseases interstitial nephritis like these two domains uh, predominantly sir and uh, what is your uh, take on the paper after giving the paper what do you feel the theory exam was it like very tough or is it in sync with what we are discussing or is it like more higher order or lower order what do you feel about the paper per se so it was almost in, in sync with uh, what we have discussed sir it's just that uh, they test the application of uh, your knowledge there like there will be one or two options which will be very close so sir right. i think integrating the clinical postings the clinical cases with we see and what we have discussed combining them ruling out options becomes easier yes sir correct and what about interview uh so the interview uh, was actually like i was asked uh, some random questions like about urine protein creatinine assessment so sir yeah. they were basic like the units used to measure approach to metabolic alkalosis okay. uh, barter syndrome so that okay. was all sir it was there in my notes so i was able to answer sir yes yeah so maros ss program is also a very new one as you would know we just uh, released the videos for the first time towards the end of 2021 so just like 3 years into the program So it's not like Maro Neat P T app, which is there for a long time. So what what did you feel as such on our videos, the total content, the test series, the grand test? Like how can it be made better, and what was your general feeling as a person who's studying in a college where there are a large number of cases? How has it helped you to actually kind of streamline your preparation? Uh, sir, uh, actually, I feel like uh, even though the post grad the Maro P G program has been there for a long, the S S program was also very competent. for the yeah. post grad entrance also i had started from that and so it yeah. was very easy for me to uh, acclimatize to the q bank like how the tests are to uh, videos i had seen your videos sir during uh, md like mbbs days also so okay. i am acclimatized to your way of teaching already so yeah. it was uh, like very easy for me uh, to go through these videos and maro and say so the yeah. other subjects also sir like cardiology i refer to a lot neurology sir like whatever we see there are videos related to there on video so once i see a case i can go through the notes on the app i can go through the videos and yeah. then like it helps in uh, combining everything and yeah so everything cool. falls in place mm -hmm. yeah that's actually very good because i think you would have watched the same video as a, as an undergraduate right and now when you're watching the video uh, about to enter into dm residency i think that would be a, like a totally a different feeling altogether because you would have see watched the video without seeing the patient then watched the video yes. after seeing the patient so i think it will be like very relatable to you and that's really yes, nice too now like it is see, complete it's complete yeah and now there are like yes. so many students who are preparing you know for neat ug sorry neat pg as well as for neat ss and you are coming from kanpur uh, and from there you've come to ahmedabad and from ahmedabad to chandigarh and you're into the apex center what's your like two pieces of wisdom for those students like for the thousands and thousands of preparing especially for uttar pradesh and wherein you can see that large number of students like again they repeat and repeat and repeat so what's your general take on uh, like how the how they should be approaching this whole affair so i think like uh, the moment we enter mbbs we should be just uh, be regular uh, with our studies regular being like you study first year subjects in first year second and second year try to uh, like complete those subject try to have an expertise in those subjects in that year itself so so during my mbbs days also i studied uh, like regularly it was not for very long hours every day but for a few hours that was every day uh, irrespective of whether exams are approaching or not you know same was in md sir like from the very first day like whatever cases i used to see i used to ask my seniors like where should i read this from how should i do this reading continuously helps in uh, It, it it does not feel burdensome if we read continuously rather than uh, having lot of information just before the exam okay fine and also like you are from uttar pradesh you've done your undergraduation from gujarat now your post graduation from chandigarh like so how is it for a person who is outside a particular state to come into a course and get it done because many people are reluctant in doing that if i am from kerala i prefer studying in kerala itself or i am If I'm Tamil Nadu, I prefer studying in Tamil Nadu. So I generally don't take the risk of going to another state because then there are so many A, B, C, D issues. So how have you kind of uh, tackled all that? So like from Uttar Pradesh to Gujarat, uh, I was able to acclimate. It took around five six months to acclimatize. But uh, 
I was able to do it well. And also, sir, during the MBBS days, we have like one, two years to get used to the language also. By the time we start seeing patients in the third year and final year. So in the first two years, and the language was also not very difficult to learn. So yeah. that way it was easier. And like some people are afraid of some like food related issues. There are differences related to that also. But with respect to that, like Uttar Pradesh and Gujarat were almost like similar. I did not feel a lot of difference or like that. So you are like strongly recommending people to go wherever they want. It's not like you have to be thinking two, three times before that. No, no, sir. Yes, sir. They can, sir. Like it is uh, easy, sir. Uh, easy. In MD, and it might be difficult, but yeah. like. And what about your experience in a central institute? Like, uh, how was doing PG in a central institute different from a normal state college? Like, how was the central institute enhanced you? Uh, so like uh, in PGI, sir, like uh, one thing was that I, that I was exposed to all the super specialities, yes. like uh, the number of exams we have for SS, like for hepatology, gastro, hemat, mm -hmm. cardio, pulmo, neuro, everything, rheumatology also. So all these, uh, I was able to have exposure of all the specialties and all the units were well developed. Like they, like every unit is around 20, 30 years old, well running yes. OPD fixed duration of wards and during the rounds also the academics in the central institute are also very good sir like in pgi there are morning eight to nine academics all throughout the week so that helps in like learning from the senior residents of that respective speciality okay. that gives a different perspective uh all together sir exactly and now there is so much of debate on like see i am somebody who has studied from the textbook because textbook was my only access then you are somebody who has used a mix of both videos, online platforms and textbooks. So there are a lot of people, the old people who believe in the old school of thought that like we have to read from the textbook. I am a person who believes that when I am doing a video, I have already read a textbook for you. And in fact, more than that. So obviously the video should be much better off than the textbook. So what is your general take on reading versus videos? So like for any topic, like what I do, like I watch the video first. And if you, if you feel like you want to dwell more into the topic so you should do it after watching the video because uh, watching the video like it gives a, a wholesome view of it and that too coming from an expert like you have you would have seen multiple cases and you are sharing your experience with respect to that so it has a yeah. clinical component also it has a text like component also while reading the textbook it sometimes the clinical touch is uh, not very much there so like once watching the video we get a wholesome idea and like if you want to read something more, you can refer to other sources. But like for my approach used to be like I used to watch the video first for any topic uh, in any subject and then go like if I felt like he, if I felt like this is enough for most of the videos, it was enough. Like yeah. I think I'll able to manage patients with respect to that. I'm able to understand the disease from the video. Then I don't need to go much into uh, a deeper text. But uh, if uh, like I feel like for this topic, I need to know more. There is something uh, I'm not understanding. Then I refer to the textbooks. Great. So how have you actually uh, managed to read Harrison in total or like just uh, read whatever is necessary? No, sir, not in total, sir. Like specific topics like endocrinology, sir, I read from Harrison. Some of neurology, uh, nephrology, yeah. those, whatever I needed reference, I read from Fiholi. But yeah. in total, sir, I was not able to complete. I also resorted to some of the PPTs we have up to date, like reading on the phone in the hospital only. Yeah. Correct. So that's so. nice. Yeah, great. And also with respect to giving exams, like are you a person who gives so many exams, whatever small test that comes, you just give it off. Like what is your general take on giving the grant tests or exams in general? Sir, I think uh, grant tests, so I used to write, sir. Grant tests uh, help in like, the developing the skill of solving NCQs, the uh, getting used to the way to rule out options. And like at the end, when you have used your technique to solve the paper and you see, yes, my technique is fitting right in this type of questions. You can use the same technique while solving the final exam. Like I used to rule out options with my technique. It used to read uh, lead to good results in the mock exam. So I, I was able to replicate the same in the final exam. Wow. So that's nice. So I think the overall message is so very clear. Like I've been talking to toppers even last time and this time. 
like generally we had this plan of dropping a year after pg and then deciding which subject and then studying and taking a seat because the seats were only one or two here and there now i think with the solid focus preparation during your pg itself it's almost like very practical to get a seat and that too in the central institute so overall we uh, want to talk to somebody who is planning to take up a pg seat and how many people are joining for pg now uh, some people are joining in central institute some people in state colleges and some people in colleges where there are enough patients what would be a general tips to somebody who is like mbbs is like very minimal exposure most of the people had mbbs during covid time so couldn't study anything properly so their their entire hope is resting on pg they are planning to become a doctor through this pg so what will be your advice to them like sir attend seeing more and more patients attending rounds asking questions from your seniors and i think sir patients are the best teachers like you see a patient you should see more and more patients during uh, post graduation i think sir that is the key to learning there are uh, many uh, yes sir there are many differences in reading from the textbook and applying that to the patient and that will come with i think practice of 3 years only like multiple patient you see apply and you see the result yourself follow up the patient and i think that is the best way to learn sir yeah so that's just awesome just before this interview i was doing interview of rank 3 He is from Assam and then did his PG from uh, Mamsi in Delhi. And it's like you going to give the exam. So I was like thinking there is so much of so much in common between both of you. But you are, I may not be knowing each other, but there is so much in common between both of you. And there is so much in common between three of us. That means the way we generally look at the subject is like basically our love for medicine is more than the love for any other subject. So basically, we think yes. of nephrology as something that has a connection. We believe in seeing more patients rather than reading. So these are all very common things. So what I understand is the undergraduate training program, if it is done properly, then our mindset is actually set in a way that we can actually achieve everything else, whatever we want, because that mindset yes. is the most important part. And I think your mindset is also. perfect and i'm i'm happy that you are going to be one nephrologist who will be of use to the mass i think after your course you should not stay back in chandigarh or delhi you should go back to uttar pradesh because delhi and chandigarh have enough and more good nephrologists we need more nephrologists to come to second tier third tier cities because that is where the diagnosis has been missed so and that is where we are missing on quality time so have you thought like that like you have to go back to uttar pradesh or have you ever thought that way yes sir i have i have to clear in my mind that i'll go back to my city only not yeah. planning to stay in a tier 1 city exactly i think that is where you will be able to make a lot more difference because uh, we are having a lopsided system here many a times where in the best doctors are all what is say at three in three or four cities or maybe five or six cities and yes. patients are there everywhere <laughs> so obviously that's a bit of a lopsided system so once again really happy for you huge congrats and uh, best wishes for you thank you thank you so much sir